Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'll be ranking all the albums in Pink Floyd's discography. First of all, for those who don't know, Pink Floyd is one of the most influential rock bands of all time, giving us some of the best albums ever released. Their main lineup consists of Roger Waters, David Gilmour, Richard Wright and Nick Mason. They have released 14 albums plus a movie soundtrack which shall not be included in this video. Before we get started, let's go through a brief recap of the band's history. In 1967, Pink Floyd emerged out of the underground scene with Pipe at the Gates of Dawn, and in 1968, they released A Source Full of Secrets. After that, he was kicked out due to his rapidly deteriorating mental health caused by his heavy use of drugs and was replaced by David Gilmour. We now enter a middle age here, with some often forgotten gems in the band's discography due to them being overlooked because of the band's later works, specifically The Epic Era, lasting from 1973 to 1979. In this span of time, the group released their most critically acclaimed records. Then we have the final cut, with just the final cut. And finally, the Gilmore-led era, releasing three records from 1987 to 1994 to 2014. If you wish to read in-depth reviews of these albums, they are on my blog, link is in the description. With that out of the way, we can get into the ranking, so let's get straight into it. Number 14. The Final Cut Yes, in my opinion, The Final Cut is the worst Pink Floyd album. Let me explain. This album came right after the war, which was mainly led by Roger Waters. Well, this album sounds like a Roger Waters solo album. He has the lead vocals on all the songs except for Non Now John, which is pretty decent. My only two highlights for this album would be the post-war dream and the gunner's dream. The first one is a mostly soft and mellow piano driven song with gentle vocals from Roger Waters. The second one is a bit more different compared to the previous pick, as it uh, features a loud saxophone creating a very smooth atmosphere alongside mellow vocals from Roger Waters once more. But far from that all the other songs sound bland and forgettable. Now I'm about to go full on melon style here because I'm going to tell you the score I gave this album with a light, decent or strong prefix. And for this one, it was a light to decent 1 out of 10. If you are to start listening to Pink Floyd, do not start with this record, please. It's boring, it's overdramatic and the band would have worked just fine if it didn't exist. Number 13, The Division Bell. And I can already hear the angry comments. The Division Bell was the band's last record released for 20 years and it is an attempt at recreating that classic Pink Floyd feel. But it just drags on for way too long. The shortest song on here is 4 minutes long, and I'm not trying to sound impatient here. Spoilers, my favourite song from the band is 20 minutes long, but that song has substance, it evolves, it turns into multiple different sounds and sections, but here all the songs sound the same, long, overblown rock songs as if Imagine Dragons were dragged into the 80s and 90s. Though the record has a few highlights. The opener cluster 1 is a gentle piano driven song that really sets an atmosphere. Marooned is an absolutely amazing instrumental track that reminds me a lot of Us and Them from Dark Side of the Moon. And Worrying the Inside Out is a slow, jazzy song with the gorgeous saxophones at the beginning and one of the best guitar solos in the entire Gilmore led era. The score I gave it was a strong 2 out of 10. If you are a fan of this kind of overblown rock music then go ahead and listen to this record. But personally, I lost my patience with it. For just over an hour this album could have been considerably trimmed down. Number 12. The Endless River. Most likely the band's last album. It's mostly comprised of leftover scraps from the Division Bell sessions. It also features only one song with vocals, that being the final track, Louder Than Words. It contains short ambient pieces or bombastic rock songs that would have fit in very well with the previous record. My main gripe with this album is that it's more of the same. Whilst The Division Bell also suffered from the same problem, I can at least distinguish the songs from each other. Here they all sound like this track that came before them. Some highlights would be Things Left Unsaid, an ambient piece with echoey guitar plugs and serene synth chords, and On Noodle Street, which features a nice jazzy feel 
as if it were on a lo-fi hip-hop stream. Ah yes, my favorite music for studying is lo-fi ambient rock songs that study slash say satiety is bad too. I gave this album a decent 3 out of 10. This is probably the band's most forgettable record, and is more or less just background music to meditate or something like that. Number 11, Umaguma. Have you ever wanted to hear a group of grown men make animal noises with their mouths? Uh, oh well, too bad, boys. Send him to Umaguma. Wait, no! <laughs> this is a total mess. First of all, it's a double album, and the first half is a section of live songs with one of their best. Careful with that axe, Eugene. But then it all downhill from there. Sisyphus is a cacophony of piano chords and cymbals. But then we're greeted to Granchester Meadows with some quiet guitar playing, gentle vocals and bird chirping. It's actually a very comforting song. But then we have the very aptly named several species of small furry animals gathered together in a cave and grooving with a Pict. I have never heard something so bad yet hilarious in my life, it's so bad it's good type stuff. Kind of like Venom by Eminem. Venom! Venom! And the rest of this album is just guitar strumming, noise, and breakbeat like drums. I give the album a strong 3. This is the band's most unusual and most experimental release. And if you wish to hear grown men making noises, then go ahead and listen to several species of small free animals gathered together in a cave and grooving with a pict. Number 10. A momentary lapse of reason. So remember when I said the Division Bell sounded like Imagine Dragons brought back to the 80s and 90s? Well, this album is Imagine Dragons brought into the 80s and 90s. The most overblown, loud, reverberated, filtered, echoey and bombastic rock you will ever hear. Drum machines, synthesizers, crunchy guitars and choirs all find their place here. Whilst I do enjoy the 80s sound, this just sounds outdated, expired, left in the freezer for too long and now it has terminal frost. Which is one of the better cuts on here. The opener Signs of Life has some really nice synth chords, Dogs of War is pretty groovy and Soro had a pretty nice sounding guitar, but really the album falls flat on its face. Very little substance and very little to talk about. I gave this album a light to decent 4. I would not recommend starting with this album because the worst part about this record is that it does not sound the slightest like Pink Floyd and that's what pulls it down the most. Number 9. Burger King, I mean Obscured by Clouds. This is actually a pretty nice album. But what's funny is that this was made during the dark side of the moon as a side project. This is the soundtrack for a French movie and I have not seen the movie so I don't know how well it fits. But personally I find what the record- What are you doing here? Uh, Bye. That was weird. One of my favorite songs on here is Burning Bridges with a really nice sounding guitar and an overall relaxing vibe. Mudman was another calming song with quiet guitars and synth chords that creates even more of an atmosphere. Stay sounded pretty similar to Burning Bridges and Absolutely Curtains was a nice and suspenseful piece that I feel led up to the dark side of the moon as this soundtrack was released only 10 months before the monument of a release that is Dark Side of the Moon. I gave this album a light to decent 6 due to its rather mediocre nature. But it's a solid release, definitely not the best, but much better than the previous albums. Number 8. The Pipe at the Gates of Dawn. We have finally reached the debut release of this band, and it sounds nothing like the later albums, mainly due to the group being led by Sid Barrett, pushing the band towards a more psychedelic sound. We also find lyrics about gnomes and bicycles, epic 10 minute rock pieces, but it all feels a bit off. I'm not sure why. Whilst I do enjoy me some psychedelic stuff, this just isn't quite my cup of tea. It has some good songs, don't get me wrong, but I feel as if it's a bit messy. Some people may enjoy this messiness, I don't. But we still have some really good songs on here, like Astronomy Domine and Interstellar Overdrive, which are absolutely epic rock songs. And then we have The Gnome, which sounds really odd, but it's a whimsical odd and it's just a really fun song about gnomes living their lives. 
Also, the song Bike starts pretty cheery, uh, but slowly descends into this, these creepy noises. I give the record a very strong 6. And for any new Pink Floyd fan, I highly recommend you stop by this spectacle of an album before you get to the big guys. Number 7. The Wall. And even more angry comments. Yes, I'm not that big of a Wall fan. It's good, but not my favourite by any stretch of the imagination. First of all, it's length. Whilst not the band's longest record, it feels like the longest. The title for the longest goes to Umaguma, but that one doesn't feel long because it keeps throwing more and more weird stuff at you, whilst he, and especially around the middle of the album, its pacing grinds to a halt. It starts loud and impressive with In The Flesh question mark, and the build-up from Another Brick In The Wall Part 1 and Happiest Days Of Our Lives is really well done, and of course we have Another Brick In The Wall Part 2, which will forever be a bop, but after that, all the way to Hey You, the songs are on and off for me. After that we have the legendary Comfortably Numb, which needs no introduction. Run Like Hell is pretty nice, but then we have The Trial, which is something else. Whilst the album is something big and flamboyant, and I did enjoy some of it, the large majority of the material on here is mid. I gave the album a strong 7, but this is a must listen in Pink Floyd's discography. You still have to listen to it, no matter what. Number 6. A Source Full of Secrets We now get into the good stuff. I mean, the last couple albums were good, but these are the ones I enjoy the most. And we start off with the band's second album. After the group brought in David Gilmour, they experimented more, and here we find the most diversity, as most of the band members wrote at least one song on here, with Sid Barrett writing the closer to the record. One of my favourite songs on here is Corporal Clegg, because towards the end they bring in kazoos of all things, and it sounds wonderful. The title track is one of the creepiest songs the band made, and many of the other songs on here are just some really nice tunes to listen to. It's just a really fun album. I give the album a light to decent 8, and if you want, this is a pretty good starting point if you want to get into the band's works. Number 5. Animals. So the previous album was fun, right? Well this one is not. It's angry, it's deep, it's heavy, and most importantly of all, it's about Society. Here we find the band discussing the social hierarchy of the world. It is the embodiment of the Pink Floyd meme about We live in a society. 20 minute guitar solo. The record opens and closes on Pigs on the Wing, two short acoustic guitars, which occupy half the track listing but the least amount of time. Oh right, I forgot. This album is only 5 tracks long, but 2 of them last 3 minutes in total and the other t 10 or more minutes at least. The longest is Dogs, with a runtime of just over 17 minutes. The Dogs represent the middlemen of society, those who take orders from the pigs, which are the ones in power, as to control the sheep, aka the masses. Also, Anyway, after that we have Pigs three different ones, in which the band points fun at those in power at how poorly they know how to handle a country. And in Sheep, we see the band talking about how the majority of the population just keeps their head down and don't bother with anything else. It's an exhausting release, but it's definitely worth your time. I gave the album a strong 8 out of 10, which was actually the first album from Pink Floyd I fully listened to, and I do not regret it at all. Number 4. Atom Heart Mother. And even more angry comments. How dare you put Atom Heart the Mother over animals? Because I liked it. This is my opinion. If you want to put your list in the comments, then go ahead. But this is my list. Anyway, after the odd mess that was Umaguma, this was the first actually good album from the band after Sid's departure. This album also has only 5 songs, but this time the first and last tracks last the longest. The title track is a 20 minute long instrumental prog rock masterpiece with horns, amazing guitars and odd noises that somehow add to the incredible atmosphere that this song creates. It's all over the place, but it holds together at the same time. If comes next, and it calms down the spirits, being a slow, percussionless song with, with lullaby-like vocals. Summer 68 wasn't my favourite, 
but Fat Old Sun was quite a bop. And finally we end with Alan's psychedelic breakfast, featuring sections of audio recorded from Alan's kitchen as he prepares himself breakfast, describing every little thing that he's doing. Possibly the first ASMR ever recorded. But we also have some nice guitars to keep us in the happy mood. The whole album is a good time and a great starting point for any new fan. I gave the album a light to decent 9. Number 3. The Dark Side of the Moon. Yep, we're here. This thing needs no introduction. We've seen the cover everywhere. This album has so much to say. Many people find it to be the best album of all time, and I can totally see why. The deep lyrical content, the powerful instrumentation, it all works together to create this psychedelic journey through prog rock, but that is not to say it's flawless. Personally, I find the back end of the record rather forgettable. Any color you like leaves my head after I finish it, and brain damage with the clips aren't anything wow. I have just upset a lot of people saying that. But the album still has some incredible tunes. The transition from speak to me to breathe always gives me chills. Time and money are absolute bangers. On the run is mid, but us and them sound so powerful and the great gig in the sky is truly unforgettable. I gave this album a 10. But it is a very light, a very feathery, malnourished 10, as it is on the brink of falling onto a 9. But this album still is a must listen nonetheless. Go listen to it right now. Number 2. Now along this video I have had some very hot takes, very spicy hot takes. But I think none of them compares to this. Metal is better than Dark Side of the Moon. Now hear me out, I know there are plenty of arguments against this, but I think metal is the superior one. First of all, I enjoyed all the songs on here compared to Dark Side. Second, I can listen to metal whenever I want and just relax to it while Dark Side of the Moon is grandiose and majestic. Metal is just a nice and welcoming album, similar to Atom Heart Mother. One of these days opens the album in a nice rock fashion, whilst a pillow of winds lowers the tension, fearless sounds like Moonchild from In the Court of the Crimson King, San Tropez is another soothing song, Seamus has a much jazzy feel. But we all know, the main attraction from this album is Echoes. This 20 minute behemoth of a song is the definition of Pink Floyd. Gentle instrumentation, psychedelic sounds and amazing guitar solos. A must listen song. No, just listen to the whole album, it's only 6 songs. The score, a solid 10 out of 10. And finally, you already know what it is. Number 1. Wish You Were Here. I made an entire video on this thing. Go watch that instead, cause otherwise I'm just gonna be repeating myself. Thank you for watching this video. Apologies for the lack of uploads, have been a bit busy. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button. And if you want to see more music discussion videos, maybe subscribe to the channel. That's all for today. Take care. Goodbye everyone.